Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Arrested and Free. I have been arrested by God's goodness, by His grace, by His love, and by His mercy. And therefore, I've been set free from fear, pain, anxiety, discontentment, and all the negative things that can happen to us in life, I've been set free from. My name is Julianne Harris. Today is August the 4th in the year of our Lord 2024. And man, um, the summer is going by quickly and part of me is like, oh, it's going so fast. And then another part of me is like, let's get it done. <laughs> so I'm so glad you've tuned in today. I'm continuing on this series of who is God? You know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it matters big time to know who God is. However, you will only experience him to the degree that you understand who he is. So my basis scripture for this teaching is, um, ugh, sorry, uh, the basis scripture for this teaching is 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, it says, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that are that have attained obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God uh, and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God, according as a according as his divine power hath given unto us all things per that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath uh, called us to glory and virtue. So that's my basis scripture. Man, I totally stumbled through that. However, the idea is, is that your knowledge of God is making or breaking you. Your knowledge of who God is and your concept and idea of who God is, is making or breaking your victory, um, your victory or defeat. And this as a Christian, like walking out your Christian life, it could be in specific situations, but in an overall sense of the word of being a Christian. I lived for decades, folks, literally decades of unsuccessful, defeated life as a believer, as a Christian, as someone who believed in Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I didn't have any concept of who God is. And some of you may find yourself in that situation. So who is God? Who is God to you? And it's the truth that's going to set you free. And the only standard of truth is the word of God. So if your perception, your idea, your belief system of who God is and what his nature is like, if it is contrary to the word of God, then you're believing a lie about who God is. And that's hindering how God is able to work in your life. Grace and peace are multiplied to you, not just added, not just, you know, kind of brushed in there, multiplied. Grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God. If you think about God and you don't feel a uh, grace and peace, then you're believing the wrong thing about God. And that's not guilt or condemnation, but that's the point of this series, okay? So who is God? Who is God to you? And so last week I touched on God is love. It's not, it's not a feeling that he has. You know, we here in this world, we are ruled by feelings. We are, <clears throat> we have such a wrong concept of what, what love is. Our carnal love, because we are fallen man, is always going to fall short compared to the unconditional, unchanging, unwavering love of God for us. And then he loved us so much that he sent his son. But then once we believe in his son, much more. <laughs> it's, does he love us? Does he accept us? Does he want to give us good things? Does he want to have relationship with us and multiply that grace and peace to us through the knowledge of him? So good, you guys. So I touched on God is love. First of all, God is spirit. God is love. Now, the next part I'm going to share today uh, before I get into the reasons why we have misconceptions of who God is, of his nature, I'm telling you, it, it was a game changer for me. Once I understood who God is and I understood the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant and all the things that went into it, oh my goodness, it was a game changer for me because then I could start dreaming and going, you know what? I know, I may not know what the future holds, but I know that it's good. I know that God has good things in store for me praise God. And I could say it confidently. 
and I still do today. And so I'm here to declare to you today, I may not know what your future holds, but I'll tell you this much, it's good because <laughs> God loves you. So let's just choose to believe it. <laughs> okay, so today I want to talk about you know, I touched on it last week. Like if you, if somebody were to walk up to you and be like, who is God? Or let's do this. This was huge to me in Bible school. I had an instructor that said, um, if you could describe God in one word, what would it be? And you know, a lot of people had different ideas. God is love. Yes, that's correct. Um, <clears throat> but love can be subjective in the fact that if we don't know God's kind of love, then we appropriate maybe the love we received from a father to our heavenly father. Maybe the love we received from a mother who are fallen man. Maybe they did a really good job, but there's always, we as humans are always falling short of the true um, God kind of love. And so what happens is, is when, if you were to say God is love, then maybe you're appropriating that to a, um, an abusive relationship where they said they loved you, but then they beat you, right? So there's no, there's no standard of love apart from the word of God. And if we don't know the word of God, if we don't know the standard of true, pure love, who God is, then to say God is love can, can open up a can of worms. Let's just say that. So God is power, all powerful. Yeah, absolutely. God is creator. Yeah, absolutely. But it doesn't explain his character and his nature and how he relates to man today. So here is my answer. And this shook me and I thought on it so much. And so now when I read the scripture, it, it changes how I see God. And this is how grace and peace is multiplied unto you is through the knowledge of God and who God really is. So here's my one word answer. God is Jesus. And you're like, what? Well, I know Jesus is part of the Godhead. Yeah, sure. But, well, let me uh, show you some scripture today to substantiate the fact that Jesus is the expressed image of God. If you want to know God's nature, if you want to know how he deals with people, if you want to know how he deals with sickness, with disease, with poverty, with lack, we can look at Jesus. <clears throat> so let's go on on a little uh, fun thing here in regards to this truth that I just told you. Let's start in, uh, let's see, what's the scripture I want to start in? John chapter 1, verse 18. John chapter 1, verse 18. John chapter 1, verse 18 says, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. <sighs> you know, there's only Jesus is the only one that's lived a sinless, perfect life. He fulfilled every jot, every tittle of the law. He fulfilled every part of the law. And that's how he could be the perfect sacrifice. You know, I was talking... Uh, I was talking with a friend and we were, t he was talking about, um, the sacrifice, the sacrifice of the lambs in the old covenant. And, and what they would do is they would go and they would examine the lamb. It was always a firstborn. It was always, um, I believe a male lamb, um, that they would examine and they had to examine these lambs and they had to be perfect. Literally no flaw, no blemish, absolutely not a single thing wrong with this lamb. And that was the lamb that they were able to sacrifice for atone, uh, atonement or for a covering of that individual's sin. So they would examine, so the priest would examine the lamb, ensure that the lamb is spotless, <clears throat> and then they would sacrifice it. They would spill its blood. And that blood was to just cover the sins of the individual that brought the lamb. Okay. So that was the old covenant and we'll get into old covenant versus new covenant. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus was the perfect lamb of God. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for you and I to where there, he didn't just cover our sins. He took them away. 
he washed us clean. So now he who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could be the righteousness of God. So that you and I could be completely in right standing before God. We can have boldness to enter into the throne room of grace and ask for help in our time of need. Man, that's a beautiful thing. And, and it's, Jesus was that one sacrifice for sin forever. Jesus was part of the Godhead and he became sinful flesh. He didn't, not sinful. He became human so that he could die on our behalf. Man, it's a beautiful thing. And that's God himself. Jesus not only came to be the perfect lamb, to be the perfect sacrifice that would take away the sin of the world, that would take the punishment, take, he took what we were supposed to get. Praise God, man, that's good. But he also came to reveal who God is. Because see, up until this point, because of the old covenant, God was dealing with man based upon their actions. It was an agreement that he went into. It was the only way he could because Adam and Eve, when they sinned in the garden, they died spiritually. They were spiritually disconnected from God. And so when you and I are born into the flesh, born here on this earth, we are born into that sinful nature in Adam. We're born into Adam. It's not our sin that makes us a sinner. No, we're born a sinner. And until we get born again, until our spirit is made new and in full on connection with God, we are sinners. I know I'm saying a lot right now, but I really want you to get this, that Jesus is the expressed image of God. So if you were, so who is God to you? Is God some evil, mean uh, temperamental, upset one day, happy with you the next, all based on your actions. I can see where you could get that idea. And I'm going to start diving into that as two reasons why we misunderstand God through the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. We don't have a concept of covenants today. Other than some of you have a concept of covenant because of marriage. But even in our fallen nature, our fallen man, we are fallen men, men and women. We don't understand covenants. We don't understand the Old Testament. And so from that, we get a skewed wrong image of who God is. And we believe that he's only dealing with us based on our actions. And now in this new covenant, based upon better promises, Jesus, the sacrifice, one sacrifice for sin forever has now made it to where God is dealing with you and me based on Jesus's sacrifice, not on you and me. Based on Jesus's actions, that's how God deals with you and I. It says our sins and our iniquities, he remembers no more. It isn't that he's a forgetful God. No, he chooses not to remember them. Why? Because you are in Christ Jesus. And what he remembers is what Jesus did as a man. And then he died. He, he became separated from God. He took on sin. He took on sickness. He took on every single part of our fallen nature in that moment on the cross. He paid it all. Praise God. Man, that's good news. So now God isn't dealing with you and I based on our actions. He's dealing with us based on Jesus' actions. That's really good news. That's really good news. But Jesus is the expressed image of God. So that's why Jesus came to earth. That's one of the reasons why he came to earth was to declare who God is. Because they didn't know who God was. They weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come on occasionally, come on people occasionally, and they would do exploits and prophesy and do all of that stuff, but they didn't truly know who God was. God was this distant um, thing, being that everybody feared that, that the religious Pharisees became, you know, the keeper of, but you know, it started from Mount Sinai. The, the people of Israel were like, we don't want to talk to God. You talk to him for us. See, there was this divide. There was this divide and they didn't really know the true nature of God. They didn't know really who God is. But Jesus came to declare him. Jesus came to earth 
as part of the mandate of his coming to earth was to declare this is who God is. This is how he treats people. How I treat people? Now let's get into more scripture because I'm jumping ahead of myself. So let's go to uh, John chapter 12 verse 45. John chapter 12 verse 45. It says this, Jesus cried and said, this is the, um, well, let's just jump into it. Uh, verse 45, for the, uh, 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Okay. I should have started, um, in verse 44. So, okay. We're in <laughs> John 12 verse 44. This is Jesus talking. Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Let's go to the next one. Chapter 14, verse 6. This is Jesus speaking once again in John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip says, show us the Father and then we will be satisfied. <laughs> Philip. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you and ye hast thou and yet hast thou not known me philip he that hath seen me hath seen the father and how saith uh thou then show us the father he's saying he that has seen me has seen the father believe thou not that i am the father and the that i am in the father and the father is in me he says the works that i the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the work's sake. Mm. Jesus said nothing that he didn't hear the Father say. Jesus did nothing that he didn't hear that he he only did what he saw the father do. Jesus is the expressed image of who God is. You know, I think sometimes one of the biggest hindrances that we have in the church today is that we do not understand who God is. And so what creeps into us, into our belief system, into our philosophy, listen, from, from a young age, it's like every national disaster, every earthquake every flood every hurricane is an act of god that is such a lie about god's nature we live in a fallen world y'all and part of the fallen world comes storms earthquakes the earth is unstable really and we <laughs> like Man, it's so obnoxious to think that we are destroying this earth. No, listen, God's going to destroy this earth one day. Uh, <laughs> and it's it, it will be a revelation to people to go, oh, wow. Yeah, there's no way we were destroying this earth. There's no way we're destroying this earth. This earth is on a, a crash course to destruction because it's fallen. Because of sin on the earth. Because the devil deceived Adam and Eve that way back when. So I'm getting off track. I'm just here to say that Jesus is the expressed image of who God is. And if you believe that God is putting sickness on you, prove it to me through the life of Jesus. Where in the word did Jesus put sickness on somebody? Mm, didn't see that. What I see is time and time and time again, him feeding the 5,000. <laughs> feeding hordes of people with very little. He's a miracle working, working God. And that's what Jesus did. I see all throughout the Bible where it says Jesus healed them all. The only place he couldn't, he could only do a few mighty works and only healed a few sick folk was in his hometown was because of their unbelief, because of their familiarity. And we're going to go over to that because he just, he like hit it head on when he was in Nazareth. 
He goes to Nazareth. He's seen miracles everywhere. He's healing them all everywhere. And then he goes to Nazareth. And because of their unbelief, he could only do a few mighty works. Do you see what you believe makes or breaks how you receive? Makes or breaks whether or not you see victory or defeat? Whether or not? <laughs> see, it's based on what we choose to believe. It's not God's not withholding power. God's not withholding any good thing from you. God is not putting sickness on you. And we can see that from the life of Jesus. Jesus is the expressed image of who God is. Let's go over to James. Hebrews, James. I didn't plan on going here, but I think it's in James chapter 1. James is saying, do not err. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> I think it's 116. Do not err. There it is. James chapter 1 verse 16. This is James talking to talking to the church saying, "Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift, every <laughs> every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning of his own own will begat he as he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of firstborn of his creatures he's saying do not err uh let's go back uh, a few scripture a few verses to verse 13 james chapter 113 this is leading into what i just read James chapter 1 verse 13 says, Let no man say he is, when he is tempted, I am tempted of, tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither he tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. It means the choices that we meet, make, ends up leading us into sin. God is not causing you to sin. God is not putting hard things on you in order for you to doubt his goodness. He said, then he goes on further to say, do not error my brethren. Do not error my beloved brethren. For every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness. He's not changing <laughs> nor shadow of turning. <laughs> he is not changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But see, what happens is, if you don't understand who God truly is, and you think that maybe he put this sickness on us, or you go to church, or you go to a funeral, and you hear a pastor say, well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. So basing a whole doctrine off of one scripture in Job, which Job was smart enough to repent from it, the Lord, the Lord gives every perfect gift. He ain't a gift. He ain't taking nothing away. I'm here to tell you. We can walk out of his will by our wrong choices, by choosing the wrong things. But God ain't doing it. And how do I know this? Because Jesus <laughs> went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the enemy. Jesus' main purpose was to destroy the works of the enemy. That's you and I's main purpose. It's not to wrestle with God and try to figure out what God's trying to teach me in this horrible situation. No, God ain't doing it. You live in a fallen nature. You live in a fallen world. You made some really bad choices. That ain't God. That isn't God. God is good. God is Jesus. Jesus is the expressed image of God. Jesus declared who God is throughout this world. Oh man, that's good. Okay, let's do one more scripture. Colossians uh, chapter 1 verse 15. Philippians, Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. Who is the, who is the image of 
of the incorruptible God, the firstborn of every creature. Hmm. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thorns or uh, thrones or dominions or uh, principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning first, um, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preem preeminence. Oh man, Jesus is the expressed image of God. And I'm here to tell you who is God. I'm here to ask you who is God to you? What do you think of? When you think of God, do you think mean, angry, upset, happy with you one day? unhappy with you the next all based on your actions because if you are you're believing a lie that is not who God is God is love and you want to see how how God deals with people today take a look at Jesus Jesus came to declare him he was even saying to the disciples if you've seen me you if you've known if you've seen me you've seen the father Philip's like show us the father and we'll be pleased. And many of us today are still doing this, are still saying, God, show yourself. And he's like, he, if he could be confused, he's like scratching his head going, didn't I just give them a whole book of, of who I am? Didn't I already send my own son to declare who I am? What What's the confusion here? This has the potential to radically change your life, looking at my time. It changed mine, I'm telling you. Once I understood who God is, once I understood covenants, once I understood the Old Testament versus the New Testament and how God dealt with mankind differently through the different covenants, then I could understand that God, you were loved the whole time. And that's where I want to take you on this series. So I would encourage you, make sure and tune back in next Sunday. Because this stuff, I, I know I say that everything I, I, everything I share radically changed my life, but it did. <laughs> that's the only thing I'm sharing. I'm not sharing something that somebody else preaches that it, you know, it sounds good. I'm not trying to tickle your ears. I'm trying to challenge you today that who is God to you? Maybe, let's just consider that maybe, maybe we have some wrong beliefs about God. And if we could get it straightened out, we would walk out a victorious Christian life. We would be walking in the fullness of what Jesus died for us to have. Uh, uh, supernatural health, supernatural wealth. Yeah, health and wealth. That's part of God's plan. Some of you guys are like, oh, she's one of those. Yeah, I am. Because listen, Jesus didn't come and die in order for us to be humbled through poverty. I don't even get that. The people, anyways, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm coming to an end of my time. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. But I want to encourage you and, and challenge you and question you today. Who is God to you? And if I could describe God in one word, it's Jesus if you're like, okay, God, I'm, I'm, I'm crying out to you. I'm asking you, what's your will in this situation? Why don't you go to the epistles, go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and start reading and, and seeing for yourself who Jesus is. Because how Jesus responds in those situations is how God responds. How Jesus deals with mankind is how Jesus deals with mankind. Jesus declared who the Father was to a generation that didn't know who God was. And I feel like we are now Jesus on this earth. We declare Jesus. We declare the nature of God, saying you have a purpose and a plan and a destiny. You are called for something special, praise God. You are not a mistake. That's God's will. You lay hands on the sick and you see them recover. That's God's will. You know, how is it that we 
that we would never make somebody sick, but we're going to say that God makes somebody sick? That's rude. You're saying that you're more loved than God is. That you know how to love better than God knows how to love. Well, that's pretty self-centered. So um, <laughs> if this message blessed you, please share it with others. I'm sure it would bless them. But don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you hit subscribe and click the little bell, you should receive a notification each and every time I post a new video. Otherwise, you can plan on a new video every Sunday morning here on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, like me, follow me there. Or send me a text message at 970 919 0459. Once again, to those of you that are leaving me um, comments and, and sending me text messages, thank you for that. Man, it just blesses me. So have a great week this week. Who is God to you? Contemplate it, consider it, and, and consider, do you see God as you see Jesus? Then um, if you don't, then um, ask the Lord, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you, where, where you're missing it. Maybe you got off somewhere, um, you know, of the truth. And so have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.